Lee Lind didn't come to Dartmouth because the school color is green, but being green clearly matters to this energy maverick. I think people underestimate the importance of resources and particularly energy as uh, determinants of human, human well-being. And I think that this has reached a critical point right now. Economics is a sufficient evaluative framework. In his engineering class and in his entrepreneurial endeavors, Lind is committed to one goal, developing a sustainable solution to satisfy our ever-increasing need for energy. We would need about five Earths to provide for projected population of 10 billion in the world with, say, a Western European standard of energy service provision at current efficiency. We don't have five Earths. So we need to use resources more efficiently across the board. Lynn's answer to the problem, ethanol from cellulosic biomass, which he says offers the potential of a sustainable carbon neutral source of energy. You get on the order of 10 units of energy out for every unit of, of fossil energy invested. And so that's a, that's a really very nice ratio. Ethanol made from corn kernels has been touted by some as the biofuel of the future. But Lind focuses on ethanol made from cellulosic biomass, the inedible, tough, structural parts of plants. The cellulosic biomass is less expensive per unit energy. You can get more of it per unit land. You uh, have many more positive environmental attributes to the growing of it and you could potentially grow an awful lot more of it. A paler yellow Producing color. ethanol is a process of fermentation. The problem is that cellulosic biomass is tougher to break down than the simple sugars found in corn kernels. But Lynn's innovative process for producing ethanol seeks to change that. We are looking at converting cellulosic biomass in one step using genetically engineered microorganisms that will process the cellulosic biomass directly without having to do a multi-step process. Growing up in New Haven, Lynn's background didn't hint at science or even academic achievement. His parents were activists in the 1960s, and Lynn spent his early teenage years at a school with no structure and few classes. But he was always interested in the outdoors. From the time I was a youngster, I, I was interested in biology. I remember when I was about six, I organized my room like uh, uh, like a forest ranger's office, you know, I had a desk and all that stuff. It was at college in the late 1970s, though, where Lynn's interest in alternative fuels was peaked. Energy at that time, again, this was the late 70s, was a big concern. And I was actually working on an organic farm one summer and was really intrigued by compost heaps and the amount of heat they gave off. That simple curiosity sparked a lifetime interest in energy and sustainable solutions. What motivated me as a youngster, or at least the continuity with what motivated me at the youngster, was not, gee, I'm going to be an inventor. It was sort of like realizing I like science, realizing I'm looking to make a difference, having an appetite for asking well-formulated questions in terms of their broader impact, and frankly, running up to the realization that I was getting in pretty good focus the boundaries of what can be done and, you know, by gum, it's going to be invention which is going to extend those boundaries, and all of a sudden, I'm an inventor. Uh, drawing a vacuum here. Through years of trying to refine his process for producing ethanol from cellulosic biomass, Lind has relied on two things, clarity about what he's trying to do and persistence in getting there. I can't think of anything more important to, to be contributing to, frankly, and, and I am motivated and inspired by the idea that, that the ideas and people I'm involved with might be part of the very large job of, of responding to what I see as a key challenge of our time. One of the things that Jai has found, there's a quote I just love from George Bernard Shaw, which is that the reasonable person is constantly adjusting to the world, and the unreasonable person constantly insists the world adjusts to them. Therefore, all progress That's depends the on the unreasonable person. Hypothesize. 